Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today is August 14th, 2019. I'm back from holidays, but not fully into my working routine. So the news this week is gonna be done from my studio. I added a Chamonix camera as decor because I didn't have much and a little shirt I bought in my holidays in Miami. First thing I wanna thank uh, Camera Store for sponsoring the news as always. And second, I wanna mention, remember before I went on holidays, I said whoever would guess the camera I was taking on my holidays would win the Robin, the real Sir Robin Zine 28. So that camera has been uh, Olympus MJU version two, uh, special edition uh, Cortadito, Cuban Cortadito, which I put a sticker on it. And I took this camera on my holidays. I've shot probably uh, seven full rolls of color. They're actually here because I'm gonna develop them very soon. So seven full rolls of 35 all color. Uh, and that is thanks to the Frontier that now I can scan on. So that zine, uh, someone answered the right uh, camera I took and that zine will be going as soon as I get back to my old studio where the zine is there. So thanks for everyone that participated. I should have totally taken a different camera. I don't regret taking this one. I just wish I would have taken some other camera to uh, you know, a comp uh, you know, go with this other camera very much missed having a proper uh, camera that I could focus or expose myself. So I'm gonna make a video on that with the seven rolls, the results and stuff about my summer. So we're back in the news. Uh, I'm, as I said, in my other studio, this is my normal photography studio, the other ones at my normal work, and uh, we have a lot of news to cover. So I'll be going through those news with you guys as always. So first thing, we have a new Kickstarter campaign by Pictographica, which I kind of mentioned it was coming. It's Pictographica and Steve from Chroma Cameras that have joined forces to make a dry plate film holders for large format. So for cameras like these, uh, dry plates, which have been made by Pictographica, are now going to be also being, uh, you know, making film holders. They're hard to find. They're very old. They say they're people using over a hundred year old film holders made out of wood. So they've made this Kickstarter for new 4x5, 5x7, 8x10 film holders, which I'm very excited to see because it's not something you see every day, you know, something like that, uh, you know, such a niche of a niche, of a niche uh, product. So they're past $20,000. I think they're asking for around $35,000. So if you're interested in that, uh, it's very, very good for the you know market of large format, not just shooting normal film but dry plates, or uh, they're gonna also be making later down the road a wet plate version, which a lot of people love. So that's uh, news there. Then we have news from Adox that they have keep on mixing chemistry in their new plant, which they've made the Adox Stab 2. So it's the stabilizer for black and white film. And supposedly it's uh, better for the eco, you know, the world uh, ecosystem, or yeah, it's more eco-friendly. And uh, so that's great news. They made a ton of it. And as you know, stabilizer usually use a one, uh, the Kodak one I use is one 200. I think theirs is 119. So it's le less concentrated, but it does last forever. And it's the final step when you're doing your black and white film. So that's always great. Um, then we have Kodak and the HC110. As you guys know, HC110 is my favorite developer. It's what I do all my film with. 99% of the time. I'm gonna be doing different developers for a series of videos I'm working on. And um, that was being made by Tetanol. And when Tetanol went bankrupt or filed for bankruptcy in Germany or insolvency uh, that I made a whole video about it, uh, I got really worried about my HC 110 and I ordered five bottles because I use like a bottle a month. So I do shoot a lot. And uh, suddenly someone on Reddit announced like, hey, in my local camera store in the US, there's these two bottles. I'm gonna be putting the picture right now. One on the left, if I'm not wrong, is the German version that is small and rectangular. And the one on the right version uh, is the American version made and it's rounded and it has a different uh, color and consistency, it looks more liquidy. So everyone went into what is happening and I went straight to my source at Tetanol, which is Marwan from Photo Classic International and asked him, hey, what's happening with HC110? Are we done with a German version? Now we're gonna have an American version because there's a new spec sheet of chemicals into it and maybe it would change the properties of the developer. And Marwin took a little bit, but he was on his own holidays, answered that no, uh, HC110 is still made by Tetanol in the most part, but they have started production in the US. Demand is overflowing. They can't keep up with demand, which is a great thing. So they have, I guess, Kodak, uh, you know, when they saw the bankruptcy or possibility of bankruptcy from Tetanol, 
got scared and decided to start a second version of HC110 for the American market to keep production. And now we have both. So hopefully in Europe, at least, I can get my Tethanol uh, Codex HC110 made by Tethanol. And in the States, you guys might get the Kodak HC110 made by who knows, you know, who. Um, so that's the news there. Uh, I will try to get more information, but it's really hard for people to tell you who's actually making chemistry because, you know, industry, not secrets, but people don't like saying it's done by someone else. So we'll see how we get. But luckily, we still have our old uh, HC110 made by Tethanol, which is the one I love and use. And uh, it's a syrup. I use 131, which is delusion B, nothing to do with the news. Um, then we have Terra Nova 3D printed camera. So 3D printing has become a boom in film photography. It's easy to make, you know, one man, one man, one man team, sorry for that, can make any sort of camera. We've seen it with camera dactyle and stuff like that. So Terra Nova is a 3D printed kind of field camera with a bunch of movements, very similar to a Chamonix, but it has even back rise and fall and all that. They've uh, showed on a couple groups on Facebook their new version. Supposedly will be coming to the market. So as soon as it's in the market, I'll let you guys know. It's made in Italy, uh, 3D printed. Honestly, in the video I see it wobbles a lot, but also Intrepid is kind of wobbly camera. But if you wait till the camera settles, you're absolutely fine. But I kind of like my cameras to be sturdy. You can shake this camera and you can see I push it and it doesn't really move much. So I like that in my large format. If not, I'd be shooting with a CNR, which is rock sturdy. So yeah, Terra Nova 3D. Uh, links are below actually. Then Berger, German, uh, not German, sorry. French film manufacturer Berger has come with a second emulsion. If you remember, they have their Pancro 400, which is a 35, 120 large format uh, film. And then they've come out with another film, which we were all excited might be, you know, a different, you know, a 100 speed or a T sort of grain film. But no, it surprised everyone pretty much. And it's a specialty uh, film for the darkroom. So it's a continuous tone film, very smooth to do internegatives, interpositives for the darkroom. Uh, I'm sure it can be exposed in a camera, but I'm sure the ISO is quite low. But for those people that love doing certain things in the darkroom that you can't do with normal films and you need these internegatives or maybe, uh, you know, uh, alternative processes and all this, this could be good news. I'm not 100% sure of how exactly it works because I've never done internegatives or interpositives, but if you're one of those, maybe, you know, it's good news for you. I do know back in the day, Kodak had their own, which I think it was like an ortho film and Ilford has their ortho film too. This is also an ortho film, which means you can expose it or use it with red light and it won't be affected. I might be wrong about that. I told you I'm not an expert. But if you're one of those, you're, you know, happy to see this coming. It's going to be coming in 4x5, 5x7, 8x10, I think. And then like big rolls of 50 uh, centimeters by 10 meters. And like, I don't know how many meters by 100, I don't know, huge rolls. So that's good news from Burger. Then we have another video from Cinestill Frames, uh, episode 7 with Eddie Sunday. So if you enjoyed that series of videos, I very much encourage you to watch them. Cinestill's been doing, apart from all what they do in the film industry and products, they've been doing this series of videos of featuring artists around, uh, I would say the world, but I think mostly the US, which makes sense because they're based there. And uh, I really enjoy them. So you can check them out down below. Uh, then we have uh, Kodachrome. And yes, Kodachrome is not coming back. Kodak has not said anything like they said before when they put their foot in their mouth and then I said something about Kodachrome. Kodachrome, as we all know, K, I think it was K14 or KR, K14 is a process, 14 step developing and all that uh, is, you know, gone. Duane's was the last lab that did it. I actually watched the movie the other day. And um, basically someone called Kelly has reverse engineered uh, to develop, you know, your old Kodachrome film in some new process. They've made big advancements. They're still not available commercially, but he is developing it for himself. So you might want to check his Instagram and follow him just to keep up with the news. I'm following him too, to keep you guys informed. Uh, but that is big news because there's a lot of Kodachrome out there in the shelves of people and maybe you want to shoot it. Uh, it will probably never look exactly like it used to look, first because it's expired, second because it was a really complicated uh, chemical reaction, developing, la la la. So we'll see what happens, but it's cool to see someone taking this, you know, into their own hands and making something like that. Then we have a PDF zine about homemade cameras. I found this on homemadecamera.com. 
I put the link below. It's a PDF free for everyone. You can download a bunch of people who have made crazy uh, homemade cameras. You'll see camera dactyl there with a homunculus and uh, you'll see uh, Lucas with his multiple cameras and other lots of people that have made their own cameras, pinhole, non-pinhole, range finders, uh, panoramics and all that. It's pretty cool and inspiring. It actually makes me want to make my sort of own device and camera gadget. Uh, but it's very cool to see that nowadays and the whole zine is very cool to see. Free download. Then we have an Instax back for RB67 uh, by Coyote uh, Camera Works in Mexico, but they ship worldwide. This is an actual product today that you can buy from them. You don't have to send them the impossible thing like uh, Reservat. You can just order it and it works on your RB67. I don't know why everyone's starting with the RB67. I guess the system of holding it or attaching it to the RB is really simple or easy to find but I really wish it was for the RZ67 because that's the one I own. Uh, but it goes around $325, I think, uh, shipped from Mexico. It has a frame counter, a little, you know, eject so you can do multiple exposures. It shoots on Instax, Square, and Mini. Of course, it's a 6x7 negative, so it will be cropping what you see on your, uh, you, know, you know, viewfinder or prism. Uh, and it's fairly cool, I have to say. I can't wait to see more ventures like these making uh, Instax because uh, Peel Apart is a thing with one instant, but we don't know how that will work and how cheap it will be because so far it's not cheap. So we can shoot Instax. Then we go to the Lab Box. So Lab Box has been shipping to everyone. Uh, it's available to buy since August 1st, which I said in the past news. A lot of people still haven't gotten theirs, which has made a lot of people upset. Totally understandable because it's already in the stores and you could buy it and get it faster from a store than getting it shipped from the original Kickstarter. But a lot of people have been getting it and there's been mixed reviews about it. But one thing that did uh, catch my eye is that supposedly it cannot uh, process PET based films. And you might be asking, hey Nico, what is PET? Uh, for, good question. I'm not 100% sure on exactly what it is, but I do know it's the base of the film. So that transparent plasticky layer that holds the emulsion on film can be either PET or a different one, which I don't know by heart right now. But most films are made on that PET and those films can be, for example, I think it's FOMA, Japan Camera Hunter, Roly, uh, Burger, if I'm not wrong, and don't hold me accountable for that. I'll put a picture where you can read it. But all those films won't work well with the lab box, which will mean, as I posted on the picture, that you'll screw your whole roll. So if you're a lab box user and shoot those kinds of films, you might want to skip developing them in the lab box and get a normal tank and just do the old fashioned, you know, like everyone's done before. Sorry to say this, I suppose you're not in the instructions for the lab box. Maybe they weren't aware of this, but it seems to be an old issue from the Rondin Axe. So. Who knows, uh, but not very good news there. Then we have an SP445 update coming from Stearman Press. And uh, as you know, that was their first device that was a four x five developing tank that looked like basically like a little thing that you put into a club to drink. Uh, I can't say the name right now, I can't remember. A flask, I think. And um, the inside where the film would be held in, so the film holders or hangers, had some issues with developing and you know, like, what, chemistry going through the whole thing and flowing. Sorry for my lack of vocab today. And um, they've come with their third or fourth third version of the holders, which are actually a little thicker and they added a little texture so the chemistry can go behind. And this is, you know, the third iteration of it, which is good news that they keep on working on the product. So far, I've used the first version, no issues. It did leave a little bit of the anti hyalation layer on the back, but I just washed it a little more. No problem there. So I'm very excited to try, you know, to see if the third party or third version works even better. Uh, then we have uh, someone basically, this is from Petapixel, so take it with a pinch of salt. Someone made their uh, computer that was broken into a working field camera or view camera. Uh, as you know, field camera, view camera is basically a black box. There's nothing in it. You know, I could put my hand, but bellows are a little stiff there. So he basically took the computer parts and put them all together and made a camera. So interesting or not, it's pretty cool someone made a camera out of garbage, but of course he had to 
uh, like, you know, cover the inside because the computer boards are not transparent. So, you know, light will get in and expose the film or whatever uh, he was trying to take a picture on. But very cool. I kind of like the, you know, Neo Mad Max looking camera. He wants to make one that's a computer and also takes pictures, but that's already been made. It's called digital camera. So I don't know if he'll make it. Um, and that's basically the news for that. Uh, I can see here we have prints and all that stuff. Super, super film support. If you still want to send any questions, it's still working. So yeah, that's the news for now. Uh, I am on holiday still. That's why the clothing and the studio situation. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry I'm doing this on Wednesday. I arrived from my holidays in Miami like a day ago and I was totally jet lagged. So I waited a little bit. As always, as I said, my camera winner was the Olympus MG2 or Epic uh, Stylus 2 uh, that I took to my trip. I totally wish I would have taken another one, but that's a whole different video matter. And the winner uh, of the zine will be getting his very soon from uh, The Real Sir Robin. You can also check the link below for The Real Sir Robin, buy his zine, and subscribe to his channel or Instagram if you like it. He's a great guy. And yeah, that's the news uh, for this week. Also, you have my email below if you have to send any information. And enjoy your holidays if you're on holidays, and we'll see you in a week.